Hello and welcome. My name is Lena Ackerman. I'm an attorney with NYSIT's Office of General Counsel, and today we're going to discuss several controversial topics that you may encounter in the workplace as an educator. These range from what you can and cannot say in the classroom, to when and if you should use students' preferred pronouns, to following administrative policies and dealing with parental demands. I'm here to offer guidance based on the applicable federal and state laws. The goal is to inform you about your rights as an educator so you can protect yourself against professional pitfalls when navigating difficult issues. Let's get started. First question. I'm nervous about discussing certain topics in the classroom given what I hear in the media and from politicians. When it comes to issues like racism and LGBTQ rights, what can I say without getting in trouble as a public school teacher? If you stay within the established curriculum and school district policies for your grade level and subject area, you should be protected by academic freedom and tenure rights if you're a tenured educator. Of course, probationary teachers who lack tenure do not have the same protections. Whether you are tenured or probationary, you should fully discuss these matters with your principal or other appropriate administrator beforehand to ensure you comply with your district's expectations. Of course, controversial topics, whether the controversy is organic or manufactured, are called controversial for a reason. Even an entirely appropriate classroom conversation on such matters may ruffle the feathers of students or parents, generating some pushback. Getting in front of the issue by discussing your plans with the district and your local union before the event may be the best approach. See our video about academic freedom for more information. Next question. What if I say something at school that parents or the district does not like? Can I be fired? This gets back to whether you were speaking within the established curriculum and in compliance with school board policies. If so, you should be protected by the tenure laws. But of course, ultimately, the answer is going to depend on the facts. And again, probationary teachers without tenure need to proceed with more caution, as they can be discontinued for any reason that is not legally impermissible. But even probationary teachers may have protection under the Constitution, labor and employment laws, non-discrimination laws, and perhaps under the collective bargaining agreement. If you feel your job is being threatened, regardless of your tenure status, you should consult immediately with your local union. Third question. What if I say or do something in class that parents and students don't like? Can they sue me? In the US, lawsuits can be brought for just about any reason, but whether or not those cases have any merit is a different matter. If an employee is sued for something they said or did within the scope of their job duties, the school district may have to defend or indemnify them. But for this to apply, the employee must make a timely demand within five calendar days and serve the demand on the Board of Education, not an administrator or other person. Your labor relations specialist can advise you and your local union on these protocols. Next question. I understand the curriculum and the district's policies, but they seem so obviously wrong and misguided. Do I still need to follow them? Yes, you do. The district could seek to discipline you if you refuse to comply with its policies. If you disagree with the district's policies, the best avenue to challenge them is through political and perhaps legal processes. This is one reason elections are so important, up and down the ballot, from governor to school board members. NYSIT is pushing for pro-educator, pro-student candidates at all levels. Your local union can also mobilize in support of candidates at the district level. This is a good reason to get involved in pushing for important change. But what if I think something the district is doing is outright illegal or discriminatory? What can I say or do about that? If you believe the district is doing something illegal or discriminatory, you should bring it to the attention of your local union. Rather than taking it on alone, the union will have greater resources to address the matter both legally and politically, and getting the union involved will further protect you from discrimination or retaliation from your employer. Beyond that, anti-discrimination laws are in place to protect employees who complain of discrimination from employer retaliation. So if you report alleged discrimination to an appropriate federal or state agency, such as the Office of Civil Rights, EEOC, or State Division of Human Rights, you should be protected from retaliation under anti-discrimination laws and possibly New York State's whistleblower laws. The next question deals with parental pressure. Can a parent demand that I not address certain topics in class? What do I do if a parent demands that their child not be taught about racism, LGBTQ rights, sex education, or whatever? With certain exceptions for the study of health and hygiene, parents generally do not have the right to opt out of or veto parts of an established curriculum or to ignore school board policies they do not like. Just like if you disagree with policies and curriculum, parents can work through the political process to try to get changes made. If you get a demand or a letter from a parent that you not teach certain topics that are in line with the established curriculum and school board policies, you should inform your principal or other appropriate administrator, as well as bring it to the attention of your local union leadership. Final question. I have students who want to use non-conforming pronouns at school. Can I use them? Must I use them? Yes, you must use them. 
the State Education Department issued guidance in 2015 about pronouns and reissued some clarifications last year. We've included a link to this document in the notes for this video and on the Know Your Rights website. Generally, if a student self-identifies their preferred pronoun, it should be respected. The policy was adopted as part of the Dignity for All Students Act, DASA. One of its primary goals is to protect students from bullying, harassment, and threats. Students might not feel comfortable disclosing their pronouns at school or even to their parents. So another goal of the policy is to respect the student's need for confidentiality. The policy does not necessarily want teachers to force students to identify their pronouns, but at least in the higher grade levels, students may be encouraged to use their pronouns if they choose to do so. And please keep in mind that the guidance is just that, guidance. It does not have the force and effect of law. So you should make sure you're familiar with and comply with all Board of Education policies on the issue. It is also a best practice to share with the appropriate administrator that you are respecting a preferred pronoun choice in your classroom in accordance with the guidance. Conclusion. I hope this Q&A has helped you better understand how to deal with a few controversial issues you might face in the workplace. Remember, sometimes knowing what not to say is just as important as knowing what to say. If you have further questions, feel free to reach out to your local union for assistance. Thank you for watching and take care.